It's the 16th of September and I'm Tom Glasson. Welcome to The Roast. Tonight, with New Zealand just days away from an election, we examine Kim.com's allegations that the New Zealand government electronically spied on its citizens. And as it happens, we captured one of those alleged spies and brought them here for interrogation. You're mine now, laptop. I own you. Just tell me what you know. Tell me what you know! Killed Kennedy! Just tell me what you know! Tonight, New Zealand and mass surveillance. But first, here is Mark Humphreys with the headlines. Now, don't make me do this. You lie to me, you go in the box. And I'll be honest with you, the box sucks. You don't want to go in the box. A new survey has found that many Australians struggle to identify the nation's politicians. I'm sure Prime Minister Tony Rudd is devastated. According to the survey, only 21% of Australians know who the Deputy Prime Minister is. So let me help you out. The Deputy PM is Warren Truss, Tony Abbott's right-hand man from the right side of politics who only talks out of the right side of his mouth. But it's not just federal politics. In Victoria, where a state election is only two months away, almost half those surveyed didn't know who the Premier was. I'll help you out too. Victoria. The name you're after is Dennis Napthine. And I can tell you, during this election, he's making some real inroads among the naysayers, by which I mean creatures who say nay. Happy birthday, big boy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> But it could be worse for Dennis. He could be opposition leader Daniel Andrews, who 68% could not identify. All right, let's bone up on DA. Daniel Andrews, seen here walking like an Egyptian. Daniel Andrews, seen here paralyzing a child. Daniel Andrews, seen here failing to realize he's been talking to a wax version of Julia Gillard. And finally, Daniel Andrews, seen here describing how much of Victoria knows who he is. Additionally, the survey found that 4% of Australians thought the deputy prime minister was Tony Abbott, though in their defense, he is always wearing that deputy hat. Yeehaw! <laughs> but if 4% think Tony Abbott is the deputy prime minister, who do they think the prime minister is? My money's on this guy. Heaven's Australia Fair. But even though some of these figures might sound concerning, the good news is whether you can identify your leaders or not, you still get to vote. It's a good system. Online dating sites, the places where women and pictures of naked penises go to find love, are the focus of a crackdown by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. The ACCC says some sites don't screen profiles closely enough, resulting in fake profiles made by scammers, and even worse, real profiles made by doucheramas. <sighs> The Commission says last year Australians lost over $25 million to dating and romance scams, or what I'm calling the last time I take Frank Abagnale Jr. out for a drink. Never trust someone who says they're a doctor, a lawyer and a pilot. Deputy Chairwoman Delia Rickard says investigators from the ACCC will today go undercover to comb through 100 websites to see if they're operating above board. So if you're browsing eHarmony tonight, keep an eye out for people who list their interests as competition and fair trade in markets to benefit consumers. Pizza Hut, the restaurant chain where countless children's birthday parties ended in the game How Much Food Can We Shove In This Cup Of Pepsi, has apologised after one of its Melbourne stores offered one free small animal if they bought ten large pizzas. Typical bullshit promotion only offering a small. The promotion was in conjunction with a local pet store, so God knows what the offer would have been if the local store was a proctologist. The promotion sparked a huge online backlash as some angry customers threatened to boycott the pizza chain. Pizza Hut has reportedly welcomed the boycott, as people not going to Pizza Hut has been their business model for the past 20 years. For the roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Thank you, Mark. Of course, in buying 10 large pizzas, you already get an animal. It's just broken up into delicious little bits and covered in cheese. Moving on to New Zealand, land of the New Z, where citizens are heading to the polls this weekend for a general election. One in which two men have emerged as surprising political rivals. New Zealand's Prime Minister John Key and Kim.com, founder of the Internet Party and guy who still wears swimming costumes from the 1800s. Now, Mr.com is famous for a number of reasons, and not in the least of which because 600 million websites stole his surname. 
Two years ago, the Mega Upload Founders Mansion was raided by 76 police officers and two helicopters who planned to mega download him into a prison cell, claiming his website once accounted for 4% of all internet traffic and generated more than $188 million in criminal proceeds from the exchange of pirated films, music and files. So whoever said crime doesn't pay clearly just wasn't very good at coding. But Kim wasn't satisfied with just being a rich German on the run from Americans living in New Zealand, so he's pushing his luck by accusing the New Zealand government of spying on him and the New Zealand people. Honestly, talk about biting the hand that hasn't extradited you. And on that spying point, he announced something pretty special for a rally he held just last night. He promised a theatrical finale, an expose of New Zealand's spying activities, the truthfulness of Prime Minister John Key and the sordid workings of Hollywood. Oh, 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 oh. tell me more! He did not mention anything about that at yesterday's rally. Oh, oh, at least that'll make John Key happy. What did, what did he have to say about it? Coming and politicising a situation, you know, five days before an election, people can judge that how they like. Yes, an election is no time for politics. Thankfully, though, in order to get to the bottom of all of this, the roast has gone on the scent. The roast is on the scent, spying in New Zealand. New Zealand's up-and-coming internet party held an event on Monday night they called Moment of Truth. Featured speakers, Mega Upload, Mega Nerd and Man on the Run, Australia's least favourite son and Man on the Run, and Putin's pet and baby boy on the run, who all came together to form the coalition of the We're Not Allowed to Go Home. And the Kaunang believed that spying is bad, especially Kim.com, who was spied on by New Zealand's spy agency in 2012. So Snowden accused the New Zealand government of spying on its citizens. He didn't have any proof on him, but it probably looked like this. You cannot hide. The Prime Minister John Key had already said, nah, -uh, it didn't happen, bro. Sure, they had a mass surveillance plan codenamed Speargun in development, but they stopped it after phase one, after realising it contained the names of not one, but two deadly weapons. So that's gone. Promise. So, happy now, Con? They never participated in a mass surveillance, only specific targeted spying on Kim.com surveillance which would suck, but you've got to keep a flaming eye on that guy because he's been convicted of computer fraud and data espionage. Wait, espionage? That's just a fancy word for spying. So Kim.com hates spying unless he profits from it? And the New Zealand government doesn't do it unless they kind of do. So while this conference might have been billed as a moment of truth, it should have perhaps added the qualifier according to these guys. Have you ever gotten rich from leading a life of crime? Did you also accuse the government of the country you're a fugitive in of illegal activities? Did that seem at all hypocritical to you? Or were you pretty comfortable with it? We'd love to hear about it. At the Roast TV or hashtag Roast TV. Now, sometimes I forget whether I should be mad or grateful for being spied on. And thankfully, I'm joined by Alex Lee and Jazz Twemlow. Guys, help me out. Tom, this story is the perfect example of the mass hysteria over mass surveillance, perpetuated by one power-hungry million nerd. Oh, of course there's hysteria. New Zealand is part of an alliance called Five Eyes, something that could only sound more terrifying if it had the never blink at the end of the name. Oh, as opposed to no eyes, shall we just flail around blindly hoping everyone behaves themselves? I saw that movie Ray. People take advantage of blind people. Well, not blind, no, but maybe that doesn't have to be quite so much surveillance. And how much is too much, Tom? Whenever people are victims of a crime, we're happy to use surveillance footage as evidence. But as soon as someone wants to use surveillance to prevent a crime... Oh, no! Not on my watch! Oh, I'm going to leak documents and find an embassy I'll use as a hotel for two years! You want to talk double standards. How about these governments allegedly using the Alliance to circumnavigate their own domestic spying legislation? Just because you've grouped up doesn't make it OK. Supervillains don't become less terrifying when they fall a league of evil. So what you're trying to say is... That Wait, let me get this straight. You're happy to entrust all your private information to social media companies? How come as soon as the government takes a peek, it's an outrage? Well, if the government wants to perv on me, it can do the decent thing and send me a friend request. Yeah. Government never sent me a friend request. Mm. Look, surveillance has always been a necessary part of government. From what I understand, back in Roman times, they had a watchtower, so an oiled-up, metal-wearing buff man could keep tabs on the other oiled-up citizens. And now 
now in 2014, we have metadata to spy on an oiled up Kim.com. Spying is just human nature, Tom. As natural as the miracle of childbirth or drinking liquids that come out of specific animals. Well, look, I drink as much animal squeezings as the next person. All I'm saying is I have a right not to be looked at by five separate eyes when I do it. And if you think the government wants to look at you, that's just presumptuous. It's ridiculous. Oh, guys, we seem to have run out of time. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, such a shame. Ugh, useless. So now Kim.com is funding a political party, meaning he may soon have to change his name from Kim.com to Kim.gov. The internet party into which he has poured more than 3 million New Zealand dollars, or roughly 72 bucks Australian, has joined forces with the MANA movement, who run on a platform of giving energy to local warlocks to cast spells. Wrong, idiot. It's a party born from a need or desire to be a truly independent Maori voice in Parliament. No. Oh. Well, then that means New Zealand's warlock community remains underrepresented and under-energised. Still, the Internet Manor Party seems on track to win two or three out of the 120 seats in Parliament by appealing to the youth vote. The Internet Manor Party is attracting younger voters by promising to deliver free higher education, cut the price of internet access, fight mass surveillance, decriminalise marijuana and protect native dolphins. Yep, that is pretty much the exact progression of political priorities you'd come up with if you were on marijuana. You start with educational reform and then... It's... it's dolphins, man. It's do we need... We need to give dolphins free internet. So let's see what some of the Internet Party's central policies are. Amend the three strikes peer-to-peer -peer file sharing provisions so that six rather than three notices are required. Remove the ability to suspend internet accounts. Ensure New Zealanders are not held liable for getting around geo-blocking to access legal content online. Ensure that the 88 people illegally spied on are issued an apology from the government. Notice how all these policies seem specifically written for a certain man with a stupid made-up last name? Now look, I don't want to talk down to you, New Zealand, because I know you don't like that, do you, champ? But remember, New Zealand, don't vote angry. See, here in Australia, we wanted to teach the major parties a lesson as well. So we went to the polls with vengeance in our hearts and we elected a billionaire mining magnate who only votes for things that benefit billionaire mining magnates. After the act, we woke up, covered in guilt, and thought to ourselves, what the f did we just do? So take it from the better version of your country. No matter how hilarious it seems at the time, and no matter how sure you are that it definitely won't happen because it's just one vote and they're never going to get in, please, please, little bro, don't vote angry. Good night. Oh, I know you're going to f it.